Welcome back to Titan Vans. I'm Matt North, CEO and founder. And today we're gonna to be showcasing our brand new Classic 3.0 build. We've been building the Classic now for about six years and this is our latest and greatest iteration. It's packed with tons of great features, lots of upgrade options, and we're really excited to show you what we've got going on. Most recently, we've switched over. We've stopped doing all of our custom builds. We've taken all of that experience. We've designed over 100 different and unique custom builds over the years. We've taken all of that information, all the things that we've loved that have worked so well, and come out with eight different models for the Sprinter chassis. We have four different models, base packages for the 144 and four for the 170. We have our classic 3.0, which we're gonna be talking about in detail today. We also have our Ultra, our Metis, and Kronos. So again, each one of those four comes in a 144 or a 170 option. So you start with your base chassis, the Sprinter, add your base package, which is one of our four builds, and then add on any of these upgrade and customization options. So it's very similar as if you're going to the dealer, you start with you know the Sprinter 2500, you add the leather seats, the stereo, um, all of those you know heated seats, adjustability, all those packages directly from Mercedes. We structured our business model identical to that, so it makes it a nice continuous uh, process for you as the client to get into a vehicle and then really dial in that base package to make it work for you. So in today's video, we're gonna be showcasing some of the upgrades that we've done with the new 3.0. We wanna highlight our standard options that are coming with the Classic 3.0, as well as the upgrade options that this particular client chose. So we're gonna start around the outside of the van and then we'll jump on the inside and get into the meat of this thing. Right off the bat, on the outside of the vehicle. This is a upgrade option, the Fiamma F80S awning. It extends out about eight and a half feet. And what is nice with these awnings, this is the manual version. So it just utilizes a crank to extend and retract the awning. You can stake the legs right to the side of the vehicle using these clip mounts here on the side of the vehicle. Or you can actually put the legs out to the ground and stake them down. So it gives you a lot of flexibility and versatility. If there's gonna be some stronger winds or rain, it's a lot more stable to attach the awning here to these clips versus having it extended that full eight and a half feet extension. It's a very popular upgrade option for us. We can mount it on a vehicle with or without the factory roof rails from Mercedes. We can also install the factory roof rails as well if you're planning on incorporating other ceiling or roof mounted accessories. This window here, this is the CR Lawrence FW625R. So this is their operable awning style window. This is an upgrade option for us. So standard on our Classic 3.0 is gonna come with a fixed glass slider door. There's a couple of reasons we like the slider, the fixed glass on the slider door. One is for security reasons. This client opted to go ahead and get the operable one primarily for additional ventilation. With the fixed glass, one of the advantages is you don't end up with this security potential where people are uh, have complained at the possibility of this operable section being pried up and then the locking mechanism being very easy to access from there. So with the fixed glass, it kind of eliminates that problem. Now, if somebody wants to get in, they're gonna get in. But this can make it a little bit easier in that sort of scenario. Also with the fixed glass, we found those to just be a little bit more durable over years and years, primarily due to opening and closing these slider doors. They're quite heavy, and so when you go to slam it, sometimes it can uh, start to weaken the gearbox on this flap, and it can start to um, slap a little bit as you're opening and closing. So again, we prefer the fixed glass, and that's why we offer it as our standard, but if you do want that more ventilation and you're okay with some of those potentials, the 625R is a great option as well. So some additional windows. These are also standard with our Classic 3.0. These are the CR Lawrence AW1033s. Again, these are the awning style windows. So we'll show how those work once we get inside the vehicle, but really nice because they shed rain. So they, the hinges on the top here allows this to pivot. So if it is raining, it sheds the rain really well versus a half slider. It's a great option. Again, standard with our build. We really don't have any other upgrade options for this particular window. It fits really well. It really is one of the best windows on the market for this particular application. There are two of these, one on the driver's side and then here on the passenger side, these are our bunk windows. So these are here up by our bed. Sticking with the passenger side though, down below, these are two standard 
features here on our Classic 3.0, we have our exterior outlet. Uh, this is powered off of the inverter and the battery from inside the van. So we'll obviously talk a lot about the new electrical system, which we're super happy with as well as uh, this shore power plug on the outside of the vehicle utilizes a standard 110 extension cord. We do recommend like a heavy duty version, but this shore power signal, once you've plugged it in to an outlet, so if you're staying at a friend's house, at an RV site, uh, or even if you're gonna run a generator, which certainly this system does not require, but if you do decide to use any of those three things, once you plug in, it will charge up the battery as well as distribute that 110 volt to your breaker panel so that it powers all of your interior 120, 110 volt appliances. So again, we'll talk a lot more about the electrical once we get inside. I uh, just wanna highlight some of these key features on the 3.0 that comes standard. Let's hop around to the driver's side and show you what else we got going on. So on the driver's side, we talked about the AW1033 window. So here's the matching one on the driver's side. The additional window, this comes standard with the Classic 3.0 build, is the 621L from the CR Lawrence. This is also an operable window, awning style. That's our go-to style of window on these builds. Uh, and this one, again, comes stock with all of our builds. We don't do a fixed glass on this version because we just don't see the same sort of issues cropping up as we do with the slider door. So, great window. Really like what it how it adds to the space makes it feel a lot bigger, plus adding that ventilation right here at the galley, which we'll show you on the inside. The side mount ladder, this was stock on our 2.0 build. With so many new products coming out all the time, a ladder does not come standard with our Classic 3.0. So this is an upgrade option for us. We recommend putting a ladder on these vans, but some people are opting for a backdoor ladder. Some people don't want a ladder at all. And there are several backdoor ladders now available. For a side mount ladder, we really prefer the Illumines side mount option. It integrates right with the roof rail system. Or if you don't have roof rails, we can also install it directly to the roof of the vehicle. But again, we wanted to keep the options open for people. So if they do prefer some of the other components from uh, Illumines or Sportsmobile or Alvan, some of these other companies that are now making backdoor options you get the choice and we have those packages already spec'd out so happy to install whichever one you choose so up on the roof is the last thing we want to chat about on the exterior of the vehicle standard with our classic 3.0 is a 330 watt monocrystalline panel it's quite a large single panel it has a black frame so it really nests quite nicely on the top really low profile and pretty discreet even with it being such a large solar panel. So we have that. We also have a single fan in the rear for our classic 144. On our classic 170, we have two fans, one in the front and one in the rear. Quite a few upgrade options for your air conditioning and ventilation. We can replace the rear fan with an air conditioning unit. Uh, it's a 13,500 BTU unit, runs directly off of the batteries and how long depends on how big of a battery bank you uh, decide to upgrade to. So again, we'll, we'll talk a lot about the electrical once we're on the inside. Uh, on the 144, we can also add a second fan if you really want to get a lot of airflow, if you prefer that. So we can do a front fan and a rear, or you can also opt for a single fan in the front and an air conditioning in the rear. So you got lots of options to really customize this thing to your needs, lots and lots of potential options, upgrades to, to really trick this thing out. So that pretty much wraps it up for the exterior of the vehicle. Let's jump on the inside and check out what we got going on. All right, to the inside. So on our, all of our new models, the extended floor is our standard option now. It includes a cubby and we have our one-piece welded aluminum trim, which is a really nice touch here. Adds some, the curvature here kind of softens that finish as well as just creates a nice clean transition uh, on the floor trim. For the flooring itself, the Classic 3.0 actually has four different floor options you can choose from. Each one will allow for different seat placements within the vehicle. Our base floor option does not include any of the front L-Track that's in 
uh, this area of the van. It does include the two that are in the rear. Once you go up to our utility floor, it adds on these two tracks, which allows for the seat upgrades then to be installed into the van using the L track so that it's a quick release mechanism in and out. This is the captain's chair upgrade here and utilizes the unwind seat lockers that just quick release in and out of the L track to allow it to be adjusted along the length of the L track, as well as completely removed or installed. We also have a two person bench seat option that extends over towards the slider door and gets you two seats in this same position. And again, that one can also be moved along the length of the L track. You can also opt for our adventure floor that adds a second set of L track on the driver side. So if you didn't opt for the galley, which we'll talk about here shortly, you can then have additional seating on the driver side. And then our excursion floor has the two sets of L track up front and another set of L track actually in between the wheel well cabs, which allows you to mount a seat back in between the wheel well cabs. The only uh, issue with that one is that the bed has to be pushed in its stowed position to have the seat in that position. So as we get into the rear of the vehicle, we'll kind of talk a little bit more about that. But so this option, this was the uh, classic 3.0 with the utility floor our single seat upgrade option, as well as some of our cabinetry options. So jumping into the vehicle here, we have our classic galley. This is a plug and play component, completely removable. We have two star knobs that are on the side of the galley, one on each side, and then quick disconnect fittings on the back of the galley, which allows this to be easily installed or removed. A couple of nice features about that is if you ever want to upgrade down the road, the Classic 3.0 always comes with the connector kit to allow you to add that galley at any point in time in the future. It's a two minute install for us when you come to pick it up. So this is a, a nice option that you can get right off the get go or add at a later date. The galley is a one piece unit and includes everything you see here. So we have a single burner induction cooktop. Everything runs off of the battery. This particular component draws power from the battery, but is a 120 volt appliance. So it runs off of the inverter. Extremely efficient, very safe, utilizes magnets to heat the pan up. So this surface does not actually get hot. It's only the pan itself that gets hot due to an oscillating magnetic signal. So really, really efficient. It will not get hot if there is no pan on there. So if you accidentally hit buttons or kids come up here and start hitting buttons, if there's no pan on here, nothing will get hot and it'll just shut itself down. So really nice, safe for interior use, extremely efficient as far as actual power consumption as well. This is our new countertop that we're utilizing. This is a solid surface countertop. Uh, this is known as Avonite. It, if it does get ding, chipped or scratched or anything, it can be sanded and refinished because it's not a laminate. Uh, so it is a solid surface. It is continuous throughout this entire half inch relatively light for what it is uh, very durable has a look and feel of stone but doesn't have the weight or the cost associated with stone so it's a great alternative and really nice for vans because of expansion and contraction it really doesn't have the same issues that a solid butcher block is going to have and again the stone just really weighs a lot and will add a lot of weight to the vehicle we have our integrated kind of cutting board and sink insert here. So this allows you to get your countertop space back. It's flush mounted. Uh, it's got little rubber feet on the bottom here. So it's safe to just set down on the other countertop and a really nice generous sink. This is standard on all of our builds, utilize the same sink and is standard on our classic. The faucet pull down does have two different options, standard flow and sprayer, and then has your control valve here. This is a stainless steel uh, bar sink faucet from Krauss high end faucet. Really love these guys. They've been pretty bulletproof for us and you do have hot and cold water as long as you add the hot water heater package. So both the galley and the hot water are not standard with the classic 3.0. Those are upgrade options. Continuing on with the galley, we have the door fridge. This is the only option we have available for the classic. Some of our other models will utilize different fridges. The door fridge is a really nice 
extremely efficient 12 volt DC model. So this does not run off of the inverter and it does not run off of propane. We do not use propane anywhere in our builds. Everything is battery powered except for the furnace. So to actually heat the cabin up, that utilizes a Wabasto diesel or gas heater, which we will talk about. These units, like I said, these are from the marine industry, extremely efficient. They got some nice features built into them with some little flip ups for added uh, height storage. They got these little retainer clips here that allow you to slide them to keep everything held in place really well. And this unit does have a freezer, which will keep things fully frozen. Great little unit and does a really nice job, albeit this freezer is small for sure, but it will keep, even in the summertime, keep things frozen. The power switch is here inside the unit. This allows you to turn the unit off and on at the control knob and adjust the temperature here. So the unit always has power going to it, but it will not cool unless you actually flip the switch on. So you can shut it down. They also integrate this nice little clip underneath here. So if you slide this guy um, over underneath, this will uh, adjust the clip and actually allow this thing to be propped open slightly. So that's the fully closed, so it's fully sealed. But if we slide it over, then it actually props the door open. So it's still locked, but it has that gap right there. So that allows you to store it and not get all that kind of mildew and mold growth in there because it's cracked. So it still allows for air ventilation while actually having it locked still. So really subtle feature tucked up underneath there. You might even have one on yours and you didn't even know it was there. So check it out. All right, lastly on the galley is some integrated storage. So we do have some nice storage inside. This is underneath the sink, but there's still plenty of space down below and our drawer boxes underneath. So even with the captain's chair or the two person bench seat, everything fully functions, all the drawers and doors open. So even without the seat in, we still get all of that really nice storage and access to it. So they're all bamboo dovetail drawer boxes. Everything utilizes these rim latches. Uh, so that's a new change on our classic 3.0 is every latch has been switched to a rim latch. And we've redesigned some of our cabinetry to utilize different hinges that we found to be a lot more durable with all the vibration and, uh, you know, kind of uh, temperature and humidity changes within a vehicle. So both with the hinge, hinge upgrades and the new rim latches, these cabinets are even more solid than they were before, which is saying something. All right, so another upgrade option here in the Classic 3.0 is our overhead cabinet. So our standard overhead just comes with two doors. This is our overhead microwave cabinet. Really great unit. This adds a lot of functional storage. It is fully removable using our uh, puck mounts up top with our star knobs. So we have four mounting points. We recently pull tested our cabinets and we had failure at just under 3,000 pounds. So these are extremely durable. They are really locked in here and they hold a lot of weight and safe even in the event of, you know, kind of emergency braking or those sort of situations. These things are gonna stay rock solid. The microwave here is integrated into the cabinet. A nice little stainless steel, kind of a small unit here, obviously kind of van sized and really great unit for you know using the band low power draw this does run off of the inverter so again everything is battery powered but will run off of the inverter so we really like this guy it's worked very well they've been bulletproof for us and is a great addition you know personally at home i don't use a lot of microwaves but when i'm on the road and in a van especially if i just need to get a quick reheat on the coffee or heating up food for the kids it's a great option to have so you don't have to pull the pots and pans out and get them up on the cook stop just to heat something up so a great option if you want something to just do those quick reheats this unit is great and we really recommend that as an upgrade option in the back here you'll see our two cubby cabs on both the driver and passenger side Again, upgrade options. They can be mounted on either side. You can do one, two, or none. Fully removable, utilizing the same system that we showed you up front. It's four puck mounts. Get these guys on, and these things are just rock solid. This is all made out of three-quarter inch Baltic birch. 
Uh, everything is sanded and oiled. All of the, the doors and door openings gives it a really nice high-end feel um, and quality to it, as well as just kind of keeps any of that stain or oil you know, from uh, cooking or your hands from, from getting into that wood grain. Again, upgrade options um, here for all the cabinetry. We do have additional slide out trays that get mounted underneath. Uh, once you go to the 170 build, you can fit some additional cabinetry as well. But for the 144, this is pretty maxed out with all of our cabinetry options minus you know some of our slide out trays. So continuing on with the cabinetry, we have the classic 3.0 cabinets themselves. These are brand new cabinets, fully redesigned from our previous classic build. Tons and tons of storage in these guys, really functional, easy to access. The reason we made these guys cubbies down here is actually, so if you do have bikes and other cargo down here, we didn't wanna have doors that would interfere with your ability to get access to your equipment. So it's got a really nice, generous lip on the front. So it'll keep all of your gear in place, but you don't have to swing anything open or move a bike out of the way to get access to this stuff. So you can stuff and go, and when you need it, you grab it. And we even utilize some of the space around the wheel well down below for additional storage space. So really kind of every nook and cranny. On the other side here is our water system. We have additional storage here. So this is some doored storage underneath. Again, we've redesigned all the cabinets to utilize some new hinge mounts that we found to be very solid. On the Classic 2.0, these were all slam latches in the back. So everything now has soft close hardware and rim latches throughout. So the rim latches are a phenomenal way to hold those doors shut even in the roughest conditions and with these new hardware that we're utilizing for all the hinges you're sure to have long lasting cabinets that don't need to be adjusted after every washboard road on this side here we have our water heater uh, this is a 120 volt unit pulls about 750 watts when it's running holds four gallons of water takes about an hour to heat up my pro tip is to kick this guy on when you're driving. So if you're about an hour out from your campsite, make sure you got water filled up in there. Hit the button to turn this unit on. And by the time you get to your campsite, you're going to have four gallons of hot water. And these units stay really well heated. So they're well insulated. Even eight to ten hours after heating it up, it'll still be nice and warm in there. So you can use it at night. In the morning, you'll still have some hot water. You know, kind of depends on your ambient temperature. And another nice feature on the back side here, there is a mixing valve. And that mixing valve actually allows for you to step the temperature of the hot water down, which means this guy will take some of your cold water and that hot water that's in the water heater, pre-mix it before it gets to your faucet. So you can stretch that four gallons of really hot water to six, eight, 10 gallons of normal hot water. And then obviously you have the temperature control on your valves at the faucet and at the rear spray down, just like any other kind of shower or faucet head. But that's what really allows that small amount of space to produce a lot more hot water than what it would naturally if it was just a straight up four gallon water heater. So behind me is the electrical system. Before we jump into that, I wanna show our bi-slide bed. This has been re-engineered for the additional cabinetry space. Uh, the, this cabinet got quite a bit bigger. All the dimensions kind of changed. So we re-engineered this guy, uh, slimmed it down a little bit. So the weight is less. So taking it in and out is a lot easier. We also re-machined all of our locking tabs down below here. So in the stowed position, these guys will lock right in to hold the bed in place. We have four of them, two in the rear, two in the front. So release that guy, slide it back and lock it in place when you get ready to pull this guy out. Once we're ready to actually extend the bed, so right now it's in its stowed position. If we want to extend this guy into its full bed position, we're going to grab the handles, slide the bed out. So there's the full extension. Uh, and then just grab your second cushion here and plop it in. On our new Classic 3.0, we've actually extended the bed by about four inches. So we are now up to a 76 inch long bed uh, and it is around 74 inches wide. So very big bed, just over a queen size bed, not quite a king, but 
very large, very comfortable. We use a two-part foam. We manufacture all these cushions in-house. We have a pillow topper, three-inch pillow topper on the top, and then a two-inch mid-density foam, which helps to keep you from feeling the slats underneath. The slats also are two-fold. Not only do they allow for this mechanism to function properly, but they also add ventilation to the bottom of the bed. The ventilation is going to keep all of that body heat from condensing underneath, keep that air flowing, and make sure that, that mattress lasts a long time. So, you know, kind of a multifunction design, but we've really found over the years that it is really one of the best bed designs we've come up with. Extremely modular, very, very strong, and can be taken fully out if you want to get that full storage space back. And takes no time to get in and out to stow it. You saw how quickly it comes out to get it back. We just reverse that. Slide the bed in. Cushion's already stowed. Lock your two locking mechanisms down and you're ready to roll. And you just freed up all of this living space and given us access to all of our storage underneath the bed. All right, getting into the electrical now. This is our control panel. This is how you interface with the van. Up top is our inverter control, so we can turn the inverter on and off from this position. Once the inverter is on, we can now distribute our power to the different appliances. So if we want to use the microwave, inverter is on, we flick the switch, and in the background there you might have heard that little beep. Microwave is now on, ready to use. If we want to use the cooktop, we flip the galley on. We've now just sent power down to the induction cooktop as well as there's actually an outlet on the side of the galley so you can plug in blenders, toasters, hair dryers, whatever you got. Uh, also control for the water heater and the outlets. This includes an outlet that's up here in the bed area. And also that same one is tied in to the outlet that is on the exterior of the vehicle. So we have uh, inverter control on and off and our distribution panel here. When you plug in a shore power, the inverter automatically takes over, sends power up here to your distribution panel. You can then turn your appliances off and on, and you're not actually pulling power from the battery at this point. Right now we're fully off the grid. We could run all of these appliances directly off the battery, no problem. Here is our Wabasto controller. The Wabasto is mounted underneath the passenger seat on our 144 Classic. This comes with a 2000 STC. So that is the smallest Wabasto unit they make. It's great for this size van, though if you are gonna be doing a lot of winter or cold weather camping, we recommend getting our winter package, which is an upgrade option, which will double the size of that heater. So then we bump it up to the Evo 40, which has a lot of great features, including automatic altitude adjustment, double the BTUs, and really is a, a great unit if you're gonna be using uh, above 8,000 feet. So that's kind of the limit on a lot of these Wabasto air top units is that 8,000 foot mark, but we found the Evo 40s can really push up close to that 10,000 foot. So if you're gonna be hanging out at A base and going to Aspen Vale and skiing and you wanna be blasting that heat, keep it nice and cozy in here, we highly recommend that Evo 40, that winter upgrade package. So to turn this guy off and on, really simple. Click the unit on. Once it's a solid green light, it starts running. Uh, it's actually getting a little cold in here, so we're gonna keep that guy going. And uh, this is our thermostat here, so you can adjust the temperature. Uh, midway is about 75, all the way to the right is about 95 degrees. So we'll keep that guy cranking and uh, keep going on this control panel. Uh, up top here, we have our water pump switch. We have two switch locations, one up here at the control panel, and then one on the back of the water tank cabinet, which allows you to turn the pump and water pressure on and off at both for the faucet and the galley and also for our rear spray down that's on the the back of the cabinet second button here is for our tank heater pads so we actually have integrated heater pads on our freshwater tanks that come standard with the classic the point of that is to try and extend the capability of our builds to the cold weather so with the heater pad on, it does have a built-in thermostat, so it will not start drawing power until you drop down to about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Then it'll kick on and it won't shut off until it gets up to about 65 degrees. So with the heating pad uh, enabled here, it will then automatically turn off and on as needed. Underneath the vehicle, we actually have 
a gray water tank, which is an upgrade option. The reason it doesn't come standard is some people who purchase the Classic don't get the galley unit. And at that point, you don't necessarily need a gray water tank and we don't want people wasting the money on something that they're not gonna use. So when you do get the galley, we highly recommend getting the gray water tank as well. It's mounted underneath the vehicle, nine gallon gray water system. Once you add the gray water, we integrate a heating pad onto the gray water tank as well. So when you hit this button, you're actually turning on both heating pads simultaneously. Now, because they're thermostat controlled, one might be on while the other is off. Normally the external, the gray water tank will kick on much earlier than our internal fresh water tank. The fresh water tank is a 20 gallon tank. Once you add the hot water heater, you have close to a 25 gallon internal system and then that nine gallon gray water and uh, holding tank underneath. Uh, we don't do any black water, so if you are looking for a toilet option in our Classic, we offer both a cassette and a composting toilet option that stows right next to the galley uh, and gives you that ability for nighttime use or kind of emergency use for the bathroom. The Classic obviously is set up much more as an adventurer, slim down, uh, kind of rugged rig that is really tailored to those people getting outdoors a lot, carrying bikes, motorcycles, snowmobiles, those getting after it, the Classic is really a great option for you. All right, and the last item on here on our control panel is our battery monitor. So this here tells us the voltage of our battery, tells us how much current we have going in and out. So with the lights on and the Webasto fired up, we're pulling around six, seven, eight amps, it's gonna bounce around a little bit. Uh, as we start turning some of these lights on and off, you'll see that amperage will actually change and we'll adjust and it is a accurate reading, you know, kind of up to date. So it tells us current, tells us wattage, uh, SOC, so state of charge, and temperature of the battery. So this is not temperature inside the vehicle. The battery monitor is actually reading the temperature of the batteries. Because of lithium ions, we really have to be much more mindful of the temperature of them. And the electrical system is really built around those batteries and controlling the temperature. The remote here is for our fan that's up above me. All the, the buttons that are here on the remote are also on the unit themselves. So uh, hit the button to turn off and on. Unit's automatically gonna lift up and start venting. You can reverse the direction, increase the speed. You can set a thermostat with it. Lots of great functionality here. And these are really solid units. These are the Maxair 7500K models. It has the integrated rain hood, so this can be opened in the full rain, and you can manually open or close the hood as well. So if you kind of want to, if rain's splashing up, if it's really coming down, you might want to pull that guy down a little bit. Uh, or if you just want to have some like passive ventilation, um, then you can just crack it as well without actually have, having the fan running. So the last couple of interior options that I wanted to mention here is the lighting. We have our underbed load lights here, which offer some nice illumination, both inside the vehicle and if you're gonna be grabbing gear out the back doors. We have switches for that here on both the front of the cabinet and on the rear of the cabinet. So these are latching switches, turn off and on, and no matter what the state of this switch is, if I have it off here, I can turn them on in the back and vice versa. We also have our overhead lighting. So we have six puck lights integrated into the ceiling panels here. This is standard on our Classic 3.0. And we have three switch locations to be able to control these lights. Here at the bed, we have a switch. So a single push button to turn off and on. We also have one at the slider door and up in the dash. One click to turn off and on and then press and hold to dim. So as I hold this guy, you'll see the light start to dim down. And if I release and press again, they will get brighter. So all three switches function identically and you have those three options to be able to control these kind of overhead lights. So those come standard with all of our classic 3.0 builds. This here is also an upgrade option for us. So this is some wall mount L-Track both on the passenger and driver side. This allows for some attachments of different components if you wanna clip your bags up here, helmets, jackets, towels, those sort of things, or even if you're gonna stow some stuff on the bed and you wanna clip it to the L-Track, this is a nice upgrade option just to give you some utility anchor points. We also offer them in a ceiling mount option. So these are single point mounts that we mount the length of the vehicle. 
These are our ceiling puck mounts so you can strap surfboards or hang up jackets or even string a hammock up on the inside. Those are some great attachment points and a really popular upgrade option that is available with all of our builds. All right, now that we've wrapped up the, ins the bulk of the inside, we wanna spend some time talking about the electrical system and some of the really incredible changes that we've made that are making this one of the best electrical systems on the market. So without further ado, let's jump in the back and check it out. All right, so I know I've been talking about this electrical system a lot and I promise it's not all hype. This is a really nicely designed system. We spent a lot of time work directly with Victron Energy to dial in this system lots of different circuit diagrams to make sure that we solved all the problems we were trying to and make the most robust electrical system possible. So, you know, a couple of just physical changes we've made, just quick access to the batteries. We can now actually fit up to three 200 amp hour batteries in the 144. We can fit five in a 170 classic and our other models. So we have a max of uh, 600 amp hour capacity in the 144 chassis and up to a thousand amp hour battery bank in our 170s. We've upgraded the heater pad size. This is now a 80 watt heater pad that will get added to each battery that is added. So if you have three batteries, you're gonna have 240 watts of heating. Um, the primary reason is to keep the lithium ion batteries from getting too cold. The primary issues with lithium ion battery banks in a this sort of situation and one of the main reasons we keep them inside is because of temperature. Lithium ions do not like to get too hot and they really don't like to get too cold. As the temperature starts to drop and we get close to 32 Fahrenheit zero degrees Celsius, lithium ions will stop allowing charging. So the system has a battery management system, the brain that allows both the input, so the charging side of the system and the output, which is the load side of the system, it controls those two gates or relays. When the temperature drops, the charging relay opens, breaking that circuit and not allowing you to recharge the battery. So now you're just gonna to continue to discharge the battery. With this heating pad, we've actually tested this system down to negative five degrees Fahrenheit. And it stayed operational in that temperature the issue being that you're running the battery off of, uh, excuse me, you're running the heating pad off of the battery. So if you're not recharging, if you have no sun, you're not driving and you're not plugged into shore power, then the heating pad is going to drain the battery itself and eventually kill the battery, causing both a low temperature situation and a low voltage situation. This heater pad will do great to keep you up and running for a long period of time, but eventually if it's, you're not, again, not recharging, the battery is gonna shut itself off. And then without the heater pad being able to be powered, the temperature is gonna to start to plummet. So what we've done on this system is actually integrated four mini systems in one. You have your primary system, which is the battery. We have our utility panel here in the back of the van. So with this system, when everything is functioning properly, everything is powered off of the battery. So we have our primary battery disconnect switch, our 12 volt fuse block, which powers all of our small low voltage appliances. We have our inverter that's tucked up in here. And then we have our solar charge controller that obviously manages the power coming from solar. Back behind this is our pre-utility, which has a lot more components buried in there. So when the battery is op operating functionally, we're good on voltage and good on temperature, lighting works, all the water pumps, the heaters, the inverter, everything can be run. If you say temperature is not an issue and you drain the battery down to a low voltage state and the system, the BMS shuts the system off, all you have to do to get your system back online is either start your engine or plug into shore power. We have now auxiliary systems that will take over power your DC loads while your battery is getting recharged. And then once the battery is recharged, it will take back over and those auxiliary systems will shut themselves off automatically. So you have this backup system that even if the battery is shut off, the we can get everything back up and running just by starting the engine or plugging into shore power. Now, if the battery gets too cold and shuts itself down, it could have plenty of power stored in it. It could be at 100% state of charge, but it just got really cold too fast and heater pad couldn't keep up and it shut itself off. Okay. Well now the heater pad is not running anymore. So, um, 
there's no way to really get that battery warmed back up even if the temperature does rise. So if you start the engine, again, an auxiliary system will take over, not from the battery, start powering your DC loads, and it'll fire the heater pad back up. And you can also turn your Wabasto on, pull this cover, and try and get some hot air back here to warm the battery temperature up. You can actually Bluetooth in to the battery from your phone using the Victron Connect app, which will allow you to monitor the temperature uh, you know, uh, in real time. Okay, so now with the engine running, heater pad is turned back on. We're warming up the battery. We also have the Wabasto running. This is our fail-safe furnace design. Allows you to heat the system back up. Once the temperature of the battery comes back up, the battery management system clicks back on and the system, the battery will take back over and those auxiliary systems will shut down. That's off the engine side. We have the same thing on the shore power side. If the battery shuts off due to cold temperature, you plug into shore power. We have a secondary power system that will send power to your DC loads, allow the heater pad to turn back on and fire up um, the, you can fire up the Wabasto to get the temperature back up. Once the system's back online, that system will shut off and the battery will take back over. The last uh, part that we have integrated into this electrical system is if you get into an extreme low voltage state. So this is if your battery sits for months and months and months and fully discharges. You actually have to get the battery down to around 9 volts where the BMS will not even turn on. In that scenario, in the past, what we had to do is actually hook up a trickle charger directly onto the battery studs to recover the battery from that extreme low voltage state. Integrated into this electrical system is now a lithium ion trickle charger that is powered off of the engine and the alternator. So if your battery gets into that extreme low voltage state, which is a very rare situation, but we wanted to build this system to really handle any potential outcome, all you have to do is start your engine up, that's it and it will automatically start trickle charging the battery. You'll have power immediately to your DC loads and the whole system works and will get you back up and running in that sort of recovery situation. So really, really robust, lots of fail safes, lots of overlap in this system. Really is one of the best and robust systems, electrical systems on the market right now. No other van company is really trying to tackle all these problems and we spent thousands of hours redesigning this electrical diagram, relays, and temperature sensors all over the place to make sure that it works correctly and that it's foolproof for clients to use. So from the client's perspective, really, if the system shuts itself down, you do two things. Start the engine or plug into shore power. That's it. And the system will recover itself no matter the circumstance. So uh, to showcase that, we can go ahead and shut this battery off and then I'll start up the engine and we'll see the secondary systems take over and turn all of our systems back on. So let's do that now, I'll shut it down and we'll show you how this guy works. All right, system's fully shut down now. I'm gonna run up to the front of the vehicle, start it up and we'll watch it kick back on. All right, starting up the van. So we got it set up on a 30 second delay which gives it time to recharge the starter battery. So we wanna make sure that we give that guy juice. So we set this whole system up with a 30 second delay. And there it is. So we are not running off the battery right now. This is completely, it's an auxiliary system. It's temperature and ignition controlled. So it will not start up unless the engine is running. So you notice when I shut that battery off, there was nothing back here. So nothing was running. Um, in that situation, that's as if low voltage or low temperature. So it's still two totally isolated systems and will only start back up when uh, the engine starts up or if the battery takes back over. So in this scenario, battery is getting charged back up now. We're getting the temperature back up and the system would automatically reconnect itself. Obviously I'm doing it manually here to simulate that, but now the battery is taken back over and the system is fully functioning again. So same would happen if we just plugged into shore power, it would work as well. So again, lots and lots of resiliency and redundancy built into this system. And it's really set up to handle any situation you throw at it, all the temperatures and keep on working and make sure that you always have power to do what you need to do.
So I hope you like this video. I know I throw a lot of details at you guys. I want you to be able to know the models, the different things that we're using. If there is something that I've missed or you'd like more details, make sure to leave a comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're putting out new videos all the time and we got lots of cool stuff coming at you. Also, make sure to check out titanvans.com where you can see all the model details and learn more about this Classic 3.0 as well as the other models that we offer. Appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for more.